Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Daily Faith. My name is Philip Cameron, and I am so happy to see you here. What makes me smile is folks will say, where are you from? We hear a wee bit of an accent. And I think, no, I don't have an accent. Y'all talk funny. I am Scottish. I came here in 1969 with my dad. As part of the singing Camerons, we sang songs like, oh, the Holy Ghost will set your feet to dancing. And in fact, yesterday I was listening. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of making a brand new project of the original Cameron songs that we took here over 50 years ago, and um, I was late at night last night, early this morning actually, I, uh, they'd sent me some of the rough mixes and stuff, and I was sitting, singing my brains out in the middle of the night by myself, these old praise songs that are half a century old, but still anointed by the Holy Ghost, because the anointing has no ex expiry date, the anointing is real, the Word of God is 2,000 years old, but it's still real and fresh and relevant in your world, and the moment we think we're too smart and too cute and too clever to keep dipping back into history and pulling some of that experience experience and anointing with us, it, it is to our own peril. It is to our own peril. And there are people sitting in your pews, in your seats, in your world with silver hair and you think, ah, they're old folks. They don't know. Let me tell you something. They know more than you. And we need to redig some of those wells and get some of that old fashioned Holy Ghost liquid oil and, and, and water flowing again in our churches because we've, out, we've outsmarted ourselves. We've got so smart that we think a program substitutes for the Holy Ghost. And I can hear my dad, who has been in heaven for 22 years, Philip, there is no substitute for the Holy Ghost. No substitute. And we need to get back that. One of the things we do in our ministry is our, our heart is for missions. That's our main, my heartbeat is to care for those that no one else cares. 35 years ago, my dad made me go to Romania after the revolution. The Berlin Wall had fallen down in, in Romania and that had been under the dictatorship of Nicolae Ceausescu. There were hundreds of thousands of orphans. I had no interest in orphans. I never visited an orphanage. I didn't know anything about orphans. And he saw the BBC telling about these kids and he made me go. And I went and I found in a room in an orphanage in Timisoara, Romania, upstairs, a wee boy amongst 200 other kids. And God lit this little boy up like a floodlight. And he says, that's your son. And I had no idea that God was putting a seed into my spirit through this wee boy that had been there since he was two weeks old and he was now three. It took me a year to adopt him. But in that year, I rebuilt the whole orphanage. And God used that. God uses stuff in your life that you don't even see. God's moving you. In, in, he's using things right now in your world. And you think it's all about this, but he's got a bigger plan. It's over there. And he moves you to where he wants you to be. And that's what happened in my life. And for the last 35 years, right now, the sound of freedom is causing a stir and trafficking and all that. We've been doing that for over 30 years now. And we have a village of homes in a place called Vatra Village in Moldova, which is one of the, number, one of the highest trafficking nations in the world. And we take these kids out of orphanages and out of poverty-stricken situations put them back in school, share the gospel with them, and the, the results we are seeing is ridiculous. The, mission, the, the kids that come to us as orphans turn into sons and daughters and become missionaries. And when the war broke out in Ukraine, and, and there's all kinds of political stuff going on just now with Ukraine. Let me tell you something. There are mothers who have lost their husbands in this war, who have no, have no money and no food, stuck in a, in a, in a living hell, and Jesus has commanded us to go and see them. It's how you care for the orphans and the widows is how God will judge us. And the crazy thing is our kids, the kids that we rescued as orphans, have become the most ridiculous missionaries you've ever seen in your life. Do you remember a few weeks ago, the Russians bombed a dam and it flooded a whole area of, of Ukraine? One week after that happened, our kids went in there. My son Andrew was with them. And they went in and they fed people that had lost everything they possessed. And they sent me this video. It's only a few minutes long, a couple minutes long. Watch this. We have just handed out 200 care packages for 200 families in the Kherson region. Uh, just recently, uh, the Russian troops uh, exploded a dam I think it's the Karkova Dam. Um, it affected thousands of people. They had to evacuate, I know, 6,000 at least uh, people out of the region uh, because of the floodwaters. 
As you can see, I'm standing at some of the uh, houses right now uh, that were flooded. Um, this whole region has just been devastated. Besides the war that's still going on in Ukraine, they're now dealing with this issue uh, because of the war. As I said, the Russian troops uh, exploded a dam uh, that caused a lot of devastation. So we are here uh, a week after uh, helping as much as we can, providing care packages to families. Uh, we've met many soldiers uh, that we've been able to help to give things as well. So it's just been amazing to see all the lives that are being impacted uh, by your giving. Uh, if it weren't for you, if it weren't for your partnership, we wouldn't be able to do what we do uh, here in Moldova and in also here in Ukraine. So we just appreciate you and we're so thankful for you. God bless. As they were giving out that stuff, one of the Ukrainian soldiers that was part of the escort because this place was closed off and, and they took us in because of our care and our, our, our aid. And as they were giving out the stuff, the soldier came up and says, we've got to leave right away. They spotted a Russian drone and they, they said the Russians were two kilometers away, about a, mil, a mile and a half away. And um, if you saw them, they went across a bridge. Well, the bridge you saw in the video was a railway bridge, and they'd taken off the, the, the rails, and they ran over the sleepers and um, actually damaged the van. And from there, they went back to Moldova, got the van fixed, and then drove all the way down to the earthquake zone in Turkey. And um, so the, 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 the miraculous thing is that these orphan kids that we invested in years ago are now the house parents of the ministry we have in Moldova. And the kids that are coming in now, this week 30 more kids have joined Vatra Village. We're talking with 10 more up in Ukraine. We, have a home, we, ha we had a home in Ukraine for six years, long before this war broke out. Orphan's Hands was in Ukraine in Odessa. And every Thursday, we feed about 1,500 people in Odessa that have lost everything. I mean, you can't understand in our, in our civilized world we live in where there's Walmarts and grocery stores in every corner. Imagine living in your world where there's no gas stations and there's no grocery stores and you are literally living every day on your wits. That's what these people are doing. And we just need you. We just need your care. We need your help especially through the summertime. Apart from what we're doing in the war zone in Ukraine and also in Turkey, our kids go out and have camps in villages that have no gospel witness. And our young folk are going out right now as we're speaking to you, sharing the gospel with kids that have never heard about Jesus ever before. And um, plus we've taken in a whole bunch more. And all that adds up to a real pressure and um, challenge to our finances. And we need your help and we need your prayers. I need your prayers more than your money, but your money sure would help as well. And you can make a gift of any amount to help us do what we're doing. It's really simple. Just make a check out to Orphan's Hands, P.O. Box 25. 25 is simple. Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. Whatever you can do to help us, you are being God's hand extended. You might have a crisis in your world right now. You may have family issues that you're battling. You may have church issues that you're battling. You may have all kinds of circumstances the devil will use to try to distract you. But when you look past your immediate crisis and say, I am sowing seed into the kingdom of God, God will see that and reward that and bless your diligence. If you care for the widow and the orphan, that's pure religion. The Bible says when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. If what you have isn't enough to meet your need, then that's not meant to be eating money. That's meant to be sowing money because that's where God's increase comes as you sow. So please help us be a part of this miracle that we are living every day. The Orphan's Hands, P.O. Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. You can go to dailyfaith.tv. There's a giving button on that website also. Or you can call us. 833 Daily Faith. And a real live, honest to goodness person will come and talk to you about what we're doing in Moldova, Ukraine, Turkey. And you can designate your gift. Tell us where you wanted to go. If you wanted to go to help refugees, we'll send it there. If you want to help Turkish um, earthquake, we're helping pastors, Christian pastors in a Muslim country. And they are feeding people. And Muslims want to know about Jesus because the Christians are caring more for them than their own faith. You can make a miracle happen. The new kids coming in, just write new kids and we'll know exactly where to, to, to commit your funds. Let the Lord use you. I have got a friend with me today. 
I, when I get a rundown, I say, who's going to be on the program? I recognize certain names. And when I see this name come up or that name come up, I think, thank you, Lord Jesus. I've got a friend that I don't have to fight too much. I just have to let the Spirit of God flow. Terry Dross, pastors, Peckville Assemblies of God in Blakely, Pennsylvania. It is a great church. Church-wise, it's a great church. But what I, I admire so much about Terry Dross is the fact that he has got a blend of the church and reaching into the community. Jesus is beginning Jerusalem, then Judea and Samaria, then the uttermost parts of the earth. And my friend has managed to cover all those bases all at one time while having a successful church. And I am delighted to have you with us today. Brother Terry, thank you for joining us in Daily Faith. God bless you. God bless you, Philip. It's so uh, great to be with you and good to see you. It's good to see you. Please just reprise for the folk that are watching us. Tell us about what God's shown you and how you are reaching into your community as well as being a, 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 a regular church if there's such a thing. You've managed to reach your yeah. community with the gospel also. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we, you know, it's, it's, uh, the scripture commands us to do that, right? To, to, yes. uh, to reach out to those in need and and, you know, when I was a kid in church, we used to sing this song, Rescue the Perishing, Care for, Care the, for dying. the Dying. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I think one of the blessings is having that of having that heritage is really those songs, as you mentioned earlier, the old songs, they reinforce the gospel message. You know, yes. it's, it's not about, us. you know, it's about God and about who can we reach, who can we bless. You know, we're blessed to be a blessing. So like for us, I mean, one of the ways that we do that is through obviously weekend services and that sort of thing, but we try to project everything out that we're doing yes. inside. So we do that through feeding. We, we, we feed, uh, you know, uh, three, 400 families uh, every Friday with bulk distribution. It, it, it equates to about anywhere from 200 upwards to 350, sometimes $400 worth of free groceries. So, you know, they come wow. through that line. We yes, put it I've in watched. The, uh, the trunk and you see that says that i said uh, on, uh, you're on facebook if you want to get uh, get this get on this man's facebook page because it blesses me and i've watched you build build a areas for this distribution and stuff and i watch you what i love about this you're there you're actually hands-on doing the work of god uh, amongst your people and um you've no idea how many times when i've been battling in all the stuff that we do mission work how many times god's used you and what you're doing i'll think well if, if Brother Terry is doing that, I better get, stop feeling sorry for myself and buck myself up and get back to work. And um, so if you, if you want to go and see something, this church reaching his community, if you're a pastor, it's really simple. Facebook.com forward slash Peckville, P-E-C-K-V-I-L-L-E, A-G. And you, you can go there friend them and they'll keep you up to date and it'll challenge you watching a body of believers reaching out into our world and talking about our world we are living in mm. extraordinary days terry i mean I, I, How true. Oh, every my. every day we're living it's it's almost like a new atrocity a new uh, I'm, I'm, this morning yeah. i was watching early about this this hurricane that's about to hit an area of florida that's the, it's the most vulnerable yes. part of florida so you've got wildfires breaking out all over the place you get earthquakes mm -hmm. in turkey and, and diverse places and it seems that we're literally rolling from one crisis into the next crisis and that's yeah. exactly what jesus said it was going to be yeah. like in the last days Exactly. And, 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 and as you mentioned earlier, uh, Philip, like before the broadcast, as it was in the days of Noah, so yes. shall it be, you know, and this, this is what we're, we're seeing right everywhere. It's, I mean, even people who don't, you know, profess to believe in God or have faith in Christ as we do know that something is far, far wrong here in our world yeah. today. I mean, it's just, yeah. and the needs become greater and greater and greater. You know, it's, uh, if there's ever Absolutely. a time to to get behind the work of the Lord, it's the day that we're living in now, right? And the tendency is to pull back. What the devil wants us yeah. to do is to slow down, pull back. Um, oh, oh, it's inflation. Oh, it's COVID. Oh, it's, there, there will always be an O. Oh. There will always be a reason not yes. to. But, but yes. real faith and real champions of faith stand up in the darkness and say, no, I'm going to stand up when, when the, the, the wise men were following the star. You only follow stars at night. You don't follow stars during the day. 
And when everybody else is going to bed, everyone else is locking the doors and locking the windows and, and clamping themselves down, these, these wise men, rich men with gold and frankincense and myrrh with them, I mean, they were the target of targets for someone to steal from. And when everybody else went to sleep, the wise men got up and started walking through the night because they were following the star. And we've got to get yeah. away from looking at the, the, the circumstances and get a, ca catch a glimpse of the star again. Right. Following. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, Philip, I just this past week, I, I share this with the church. I went to look at something on Marketplace, you know, uh, these nightstands. Anyway, I went there. I was waiting for the people. I got there early at this house. Uh, it was a nice, nice area, but it was an old house. And uh, I just tell you this quick. I think this this will this will hit home here on what you're saying. And when I went there, uh, I messaged the person, you know, on Messenger on on the marketplace, and I said, "I'm I'm here early." They said, "Oh, sorry, we'll be there in about ten minutes." And then a guy pulled up behind me, just to say how people are hurting so bad now. He pulled up behind me, and I noticed it was a county sheriff. And uh, he he came up and asked me if I was the owner of the property. I said, no. I said, I'm just here to look at some nightstands that were on Marketplace. Hmm. So he went up. The driveway was very steep. I couldn't drive up there on my truck. It was all washed out from water. And he taped literally like a like a bright orange envelope right to their front storm door oh, of their house, yeah. you know. And, you know, just me and him sitting, this, he comes back, and I, I had to ask. I said, is there, is there, can I ask you? I said, off the record, is there a problem? He said, yeah. He said, these people are losing their home. It's going in the sheriff's sale, you know. And so, you know, I just, wow. and then he literally showed me an app on his phone. He said, there's 440 homes in foreclosure in Lackawanna County alone, in our county where we live. He said, I haven't seen it like this since 2008, you know. And, and so, anyway, I just, wow. You get that lump in your throat. And then as soon as he no sooner pulled out, here comes his family. They pull up and, you know, great big guy and his wife and three little girls. I don't think the oldest one was six years old. You know, big saucer eyes and dark hair. Kind of remind me yeah. of my, my oldest got, granddaughter, Grace, in it. And uh, he said, come on up. He, he said, you're here for the day. And I said, yeah, yeah. So I walked up. Now my, my, my heart's in my throat, you know. Oh, my and, goodness. And uh, I knew God brought me there for something more than to look at these secondhand <laughs> You know, end stands, you know. We're all in uh, Oh, my God, right? It never goes away. In fact, it intensifies with time, yeah. like we talked about. So I walk up there, and, and uh, you know, he, the house looked like it had kind of been let go. And and uh, he said, he, before I even looked at him, he said, listen, sir, he said, you can make a, make an offer. He said, you know, uh, I, whatever whatever you want to offer. He, he said, we have to get rid of everything. And, uh, you know, I couldn't. So I just, I said, All right, I, you know, I didn't want, he didn't know I knew that the sheriff had just been there. Sure. So I said, well, uh, are you moving? You know, uh, and he said, yeah. He said, we have to move. We're, we're, we've lost our home. And, uh, and, and I said, well, you know, uh, what happened? He said, well, you know, I said, I'm not trying to be in your business, but, you know, I just out of compassion and concern, you know, yeah. and like you're saying, Philip, he said, well, he said, during COVID, he said, I, I got sick and I ended up, I was always healthy. I went in the hospital. There were some unexpected things. I had a few surgeries, almost died twice. And he said, honest to God, he said, I just couldn't keep up with everything. Everything just kind of, you know, and, and uh, so we're losing the house. And he said, my wife and his wife was standing there with these three precious girls looking up at me, you know, in their garage with these two end stands. Huh. And his wife said, this home has been in our family for nearly 100 years. It was my great grandmother's home. And I just, you know, my oh, heart, Lord. I can't, Jesus. just like with what you do, you're, it's, it's, a, it's a mission field that we're in and God has put us in a place. So I said, you know, and I don't tell people this. I think you know me well enough, Philip. I, I don't tell people like no. in the community that I'm a pastor because I feel like when we say that immediately, you know, a wall goes up, right? Sure, you know, course, they, yeah. they, they write you off or categorize you or something. Maybe they had sure. a bad experience. So I did, but I did say it this time. I said, you know, I actually pastor the Assembly of God Church down the road. And she said, literally, the mom said, we know that church. She said, we've been going there recently for food on Fridays. My Jesus. And she said, thank you so much. It's helped us to try, you know, to feed our family. And then she said to me, anything else that you'd like to, to buy? She said, we have to get rid of everything. Well, they didn't have hardly anything left. They had sold everything they could just to kind of survive, you know. Yeah. 
anyway, I pray. I said, can we pray together? So I prayed with them in their, in their garage there, you know, and uh, we, we just joined hands. Well, leaving there and then processing, I, got, I bought the, the nice stands for full price, needless <laughs> to say. You know? I was going to say, I bet you paid more than you were going to. <laughs> I, everything I had, it was like, here, whatever I have uh, in addition, it wasn't much. But here, I know, covered. I know the feeling. <laughs> oh, oh. And he even said to me, he said, this car here, the nice old, old, old car. It was, uh, it was kind of rough shape, actually, an old Camaro. He said, this is my father's car from Florida. He said, I managed to drive it here years ago, but at least my brother got that, so we're not going to lose that. You know. But I said, where are you going? He said, we don't know. I don't know where we're going. How could you not know your own family, three little precious kids? Unbelievable. So, you know, again, I left there. I prayed with them. And I thought to myself, I'm on my lump in my throat. What could I do? God, what can we do to help these people? You know, yeah. I mean, they're short term, long term, right? And so I, I, I quick got back here and I called the, the staff together and Shelly, our kids' pastors here, and 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 one of the other gals and, and my son. And I said, listen, I said we gotta help. We gotta do something here. Yeah. And I said, you know, I, I don't even have a number. I just have this lady's message on Messenger, and and uh, I said if I'll message her. And I'll ask her if it's okay to reach out, you know. Sure. And we did. We reached out. Well, how about this? Sunday, that was just the other day. Sunday, they all came to church. And they were sitting there in the balcony, mom and dad, front row in the balcony. They'd never been in, in a church like this. Yeah. And the kids went in children's ministry. Well, we did a backpack blessing. And we gave away, honestly, thousands of dollars worth of backpacks and yeah. school supplies. And they did a big... Talk about community outreach. We did a big, uh, what do you call like fun day for the kids. I, I can't think what they called it. Back to school bash or something. Yeah. Philip, they rented one of these big foam machines. I never even heard of a foam machine. It's like a, <laughs> I've seen them. Like They're brilliant. Foam. Sure. You know, like dishwashing suds. Yeah. You know, and I mean the thing, the mountain, and they were sliding through it, and the, you know, and it gave away, bless them. But I met them at the end, and uh, those folks, I believe, gave their heart to the Lord, you know, and found a home here in God's house, you know. And so wow. so we're going to help. And I just want to say we've had several families step up and and help them because of that, you know, and, and just felt like the Lord put it on anonymously, you know. That's, so, that's, you know the, that's the mission of the church. That's what, we, yes. that's what we've been lost doing. We've been so, so caught up building our own world. That the world yes. that the building is the kingdom of God, and and when you go to these folks, God God used nightstands. To, into, uh, God you, with Andrew when I adopted Andrew, I had no clue, I had no burden for mission for, mm. for orphans. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know mm -hmm. that that wasn't what I was doing, and God used God uses things, and you may be watching this program right now, and may God may be using this program as the hook. Yes. To, 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 to get your attention to go and, mm. and see the mm -hmm. world as Jesus sees it. We were three yes. minutes and 10 seconds left. Could you pray today that God will stir us all to be compassionate in this world we're living yes. in? Yes, yes, yes. Father, in Jesus', Jesus name, we come to you today, Lord. I pray, yes. God, you break our hearts for what breaks yes. your heart, Lord. Yes. Help us to see the need, Lord, and meet it. God, the truest definition of ministry is seeing the need and having yes. compassion. You saw the masses. You saw the multitudes. And the Bible yes. said clearly that you felt compassion in your heart yes. as, as, as sheep not having a shepherd. Lord, help us, God, to do things beyond that we even feel we have the capacity or the ability to do. God, stretch us, Lord. Stretch yes, our Lord. faith, Lord. Help us to live for a cause worth dying for, God. Most yes, people Lord. have first allegiance uh, to second allegiant causes, Lord. Yes. Uh, so I pray, Lord, that wow. we would not be so consumed with the things that that don't really matter, but we would we would be consumed with the things that matter the most to you, Lord. Building your kingdom, and yes. bless Philip, God, his ministry, God, richly. I know you have. But God, as we continue to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, God, I, I thank you in advance that you're going to provide in supernatural ways, Lord, through all of us working together. Yes, we ask God. it today in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Wow. Amen. That's an amazing Amen. story. Praise God. Praise Somewhere God. Somewhere in your world today, listen to me, folks. Listen to me. Hmm. The devil wants to get you caught up in your circumstance and get so mm -hmm. caught up with what your need is and what your battle is that he wants you to pull back and, and become defensive 
And that's not, you are not meant, you, we were not built in the church to be on the defense. We've got to be on the attack. We've got to be on the offense. We're yes. going to be moving forward. Why don't you make a, a plan today to find someone in need? Maybe the yes. guy that's begging at the traffic light. It may be someone you see that's homeless. Do something today. It may be a neighbor. Someone needs your help today. And if you will, I promise you this. This is, this is from my own personal experience. The moment I put others in my focus, I didn't have to worry about my needs. It was as, as mm. God, God says, Jesus said, pray for the workers in the harvest. The laborers are yes. few. And be, be someone's miracle today. Be someone's mm. miracle today. Mm. Terry, thank you for being with us. Um, if, you're thank anywhere, you, if you're anywhere near Blakely, Pennsylvania, You've got to go and meet this great man of God. Peckville Assemblies of God, it's on Scranton Carbondale Highway in Peckville. The, the, the website is real simple, peckvilleag.org. And this is a church that is doing, not just saying. And as you are in contact with him, God will bless you too. We love you, Terry. Can't wait to come and see you again. Love you too, Philip. Thank God bless you. you. Watching, Can't wait to see you. Thank you for watching Daily Faith today. We'll see you again. God My bless pleasure. you. My pleasure. Bye-bye. bless you. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to www.dailyfaith.tv or by writing to Post Office Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost.